In today's video, we're looking at the fast-paced RTS, Tooth and Tail. We'll start with a 60-second overview to explain the basics of the game. If you're still intrigued after that, we'll go into more detail on what you actually do in the game, the mechanics and how it compares to other games, so you can decide whether to pull the trigger and make that purchase. In Tooth and Tail, you constantly traverse the map by controlling one character using WASD. They order the construction of farms and units at the tap of a button, as well as ordering troops around the field of battle. This one-tap decision-making based on where your character is standing streamlines the clicking and hotkeys of traditional RTSs to such an extent that your mind is freed up to concentrate on three things. When to invest in your economy, when to invest in your army, and where to order your army to go. As a result, matches are quick and frantic, often lasting barely five minutes, whether it's the quirky Eastern European-themed single-player campaign or a competitive online match, making the game perfect for those with little time for gaming or those with a competitive personality. The game's simple controls make it easy to learn and pick up and put down if you haven't played for a while, but don't be fooled by the game's simplicity. If you look at any competitive game, you'll see how it's easy to learn, but difficult to master. The tutorial itself is built into the campaign, exposing you to the game's mechanics one by one and giving you plenty of chance to practice them before bringing it all together in subsequent stages. Whether it's the campaign or online multiplayer, Tooth & Tail's design means matches are short and sharp. You could easily sit down, load up a game, have a blast for 20 minutes and call it a night. But with that said, the game does beg you to play just one more match, so before you know it, you've sat there for three hours. Perfect for those with busy lives looking for a game they can pick up and put down with ease. Now you have a decent overview of what the game is, Let's dive into the detail of what it's actually like to play the game. A basic game of Tooth and Tail, whether it's single player campaign or multiplayer, goes like this. You start with a mill, which has four working farms and space for four more. Farms quite simply produce your food, which is your only resource to spend on units and other buildings. At the beginning of a match, you have a familiar choice. Do I build more farms to boom my economy, or build a unit producing building to start my army? Balancing that decision making is a key aspect throughout a game of tooth and tail. Farms have a limited output before they become barren, forcing you to invest in one of the many other mills dotted across the map to ensure your resources don't dry up. This forces players to expand and into confrontation, and is one of the many reasons a game of tooth and tail is quick and frantic. Building in tooth and tail couldn't be easier. To build a farm, you move your character to an empty farm slot and hit spacebar. It's that easy. Your other buildings will be either unit producing buildings or defenses, which can be built nearly anywhere on the map as long as you own the local mill in that area. Again, you hit spacebar to start construction, but telling the game which building to make is determined by using either your mouse wheel or tapping numbers to select from the limited numbers of buildings available. There are no construction menus to hotkey your way through. You can always see the buildings available at the bottom of the screen using either a number or your mouse wheel to select the one you want. Each time you press spacebar, it will build that building, making it easy to spam the same building as you run around. As soon as you want to build something else, you hit the relevant number key or scroll with your mouse and start hitting spacebar again. Buildings take a long time to construct, so you must plan ahead. If you decide to invest in your economy, you will probably be waiting a long time until you feel the benefits and can invest that into your army. So make sure your current army will last you at least another 30 seconds or you're in real trouble. But as a last resort, you can sell buildings to give yourself a small boost in food if you feel you have over-invested in defensive turrets or you no longer need to defend that area, for example. As previously mentioned, you only directly control one unit, who you may have noticed only carries a flag, meaning they can't inflict any damage. So how do you organize your troops? The easiest way to move units around is to position your character where you want your troops to go and click the mouse button. That instructs all of your units from across the map to move to that location. Bear in mind that wherever your troops are, they'll go directly to that spot by the shortest route. 
so keeping your troops together or separating them in a controlled way is a bit of an art form. You can further refine unit movement by using the mouse wheel or number keys to instruct a particular type of unit. So with a bit of dexterity, you can call up your anti-building units, take out defenses first, before calling in your flying units to take out enemy troops. But let's be honest, most of us just spam all of our units to the same place no matter how technical the RTS game is. For those of you who haven't figured it out already, all of this means putting your commander unit in harm's way most of the time. They can take a few hits and their health regenerates quickly, but they can't hit back. Mostly this means you'll incorporate hit and run tactics, using your commander to scout the enemy, then charge in, click so your troops will move to that point and get your commander out of harm's way as quickly as possible. If your commander dies, you don't lose the game or anything. After a few seconds, they'll respawn back at a mill of your choice. But given how fast-paced the game is, losing your commander for only a few seconds can have a devastating effect on your game. Your commander does have one final trick up their sleeve, though. If you hold R for a time, they'll burrow into the ground and return to a mill of your choice. So if they get into trouble or you simply want to get back to your mill from the other side of the map quickly, so you can lay down more farms for example, it's easy to do. Given you can't be everywhere at once to coordinate your units, static defences play a crucial role in fending off your opponent long enough for your reinforcements to arrive. From turrets and barbed wire to landmines, there are plenty of static structures to defend your mills while you're away. You've just got to hope their construction completes before the enemy spots them, as they are defenceless until constructed. The units themselves offer a decent variety. You have tanky gas-shooting skunks, a wolf that doubles the output of farms, a ferret with a cannon that to decimate buildings, and tiny lizards that are cheap and weak in isolation, but deadly in great numbers. As you'll find with everything throughout Tooth and Tail, it's all very straightforward and familiar RTS, and the unit types are no exception. Unit creation varies based on the unit, but generally speaking it involves selecting that unit type and hitting spacebar to start the process. After some time you'll either end up with one of that unit or a warren which will keep creating that unit when you have the resources and your population has dipped below a certain level, further automating key gameplay, leaving you to worry about what to do next. So in a nutshell, if you want to create units, you select them using your mouse wheel or corresponding number key and hit spacebar. If you want to move the units you already have, you select them in the same way and then use a mouse click to give the order. Both unit creation and movement use the same process. The only difference is whether you hit spacebar or click a mouse. The game has a decent sized campaign split up into miniature challenges that feel much like the skirmish mode I've already described. There's some narrative that comes along with it as the peasants rise up against their masters. In fact, the story itself is rather deep and complex, but that doesn't always come across as you make your way through the various levels where you get to play as all of the four factions over time. Generally, each level provides a challenge of some sort, whether that's surviving waves for long enough, or only being able to use a certain type of unit. There's some replayability here as you try to improve upon your previous score for that particular level, but more generally, the appeal is being able to pick up the game for a quick go at a level or two, rather than an in-depth story that you feel the need to complete. In addition, we have multiplayer, starting with an offline skirmish mode with up to four players, and even a split-screen mode. There are also ranked and unranked online games if you prefer something more competitive. I should also confirm the game is available on both PC and console, which is not always guaranteed for an RTS. Any RTS player would find Tooth and Tail to be an interesting experiment at the very least, with the way it strips back certain mechanics and controls to their very core, but due to the fast nature of the game, both in its campaign and multiplayer, the game is well suited to those who enjoy RTS but struggle to find the time to play it. I've never played a game that's so easy to pick up and put down for short, yet meaningful sessions. It's easy to learn, but has that difficulty to master that keeps you coming back. I wouldn't recommend paying full price, but if Tooth and Tail sounds like something you'd enjoy, it's well worth the price when heavily discounted while on sale, which it is regularly.
In RTS terms, Tooth and Tail includes a little bit of everything, with economy building, base building, a quirky story, a rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock countering system. But it's not afraid to strip back all of these mechanics to the bare bones and ask, what would provide the most streamlined experience so we can concentrate on the tactics and most of all, the fun? But most impressive of all, it found a way to make an RTS playable on console. The simplified controls make it work just as well using a controller as it does on a keyboard, if not better. The game is getting on a bit now, having been released in 2017, but if you're wondering why all the positive reviews, it's a refreshing take on a classic genre, where mechanics are as simple as they can be, so you can concentrate on playing mind games with your opponent. If you found this video useful, please leave us a like and feel free to check out my other strategy game contents. See ya!